Hi, I hope you're having a great day filled with joy in this world. Today I wanted to just talk a little bit about rest. The thought of rest is something specifically from God. It's a treasure and it's a promise from God. And uh, I wanted to just speak on how we get rest. Here's a way that we don't get rest. When we are in, and the Supernatural Guidebook says it this way, when, when, when we are in obstinate opposition to the divine will, <laughs> obstinate opposition to the divine will, are you kidding me? No, unfortunately, I'm not kidding and God's not kidding either because I can tell you there have been so many times in my life where I have been in total obstinate opposition to God's divine will. And when I look at it now and think about it, I think I must have been cray cray, like totally crazy to put myself in that position because when I was there, I had no rest, no rest. There was never any rest. Any time in my life where I look back and I see that clearly I have been uh, in opposition to God's divine will, where I have not been following his precepts, where I have not been holding fast to his promises, where I have not been walking in purpose and destiny, I have always experienced seasons of unrest. And I'm not just talking about not being able to sleep at night. I'm talking about the turmoil. I'm talking about the avalanche of decisions that follow when you make a bad decision and then it just goes one after another after another. There's no rest to that. None. And so um, when I read this scripture from the book of Hebrews and it's in chapter four and it was verse six, it really, it made me laugh out loud like I just did in obstinate opposition to the divine will. Yeah, you're not going to find any rest there. God has promised us rest. And I love the way that the Jews look at each day. You know, they begin their day at sundown, which I think is so awesome. You know why? Because once sundown comes, then they're eating together as family. They're spending time together as family. And what are they doing first in their day? Resting. Then after they've rested, they get up and work. I love that idea. And when they finish their work day, the day is done and a new day starts with eating, being with family, being with those that you love, and then resting. I love the idea of resting before work. It doesn't make you lazy. It's a God idea. And that rest, though, has to come from within and without. And when we are in obstinate opposition to the divine will, we're not going to find any rest. We're not going to find any rest. Um, it makes me think of something that happened with my son. I asked him to do something. It was very, very simple, something totally doable by him. Didn't cost, wouldn't cost him anything except a little bit of time. And he did not obey me. He was not obeying me. He had no interest in obeying me. And there was something that I had that he really wanted. I mean, that I, I had, I'll tell you what it is. It was Legos. He loves to construct. He has an engineering mind and he loves to construct with Legos. And so I had some of his Legos and, um, and so I wrote down on a sheet of paper, when you do what I ask him to do, and I think it actually, I'll just go ahead and tell you what it was. When you clean your closet, I will give you your Legos. I wrote it on a sheet of paper, folded the paper up, put it in an envelope, sealed the envelope, put the date on it that I wrote it because I wanted him to see it. I had love mom. And so then I put his name on the front. Okay. Well, as the days went by, I kept saying to him, you know, you have some spare time. You could clean your closet. And of course his reaction was always, ah. and so, um, you know, I don't have a divine will, but this was something I was asking him to do. And he was absolutely in obstinate opposition to what I was asking him to do. And so, um, the weeks went by and yes, I can say months went by and five months later, Five. Five months later, he decided to clean his, his closet. And whenever uh, I, I went into his closet and saw that it was clean, I said, oh, sweetheart, this is incredible. This is awesome. Follow me. And so I took him downstairs, took him to the room where I had the letter and I got the envelope and I said, I have something for you. 
and I give him the envelope and he sees it has his name on it. And of course he's seen this envelope sitting around because I purposely put it out so that he would see it. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then so when he, he goes, oh, this is the envelope. I'm like, yes, it is the envelope. And so he opened it up. Dear Attic, thank you for cleaning your closet. Now that you have cleaned your closet, you may have your Legos. Love you, Mom. I cannot even begin to tell you the expression that was on his face when he read that letter. And I'm not God, but it was one of those moments where it really spoke to me. And I was convicted because I thought, whoa, joy. On the other side of obedience, what is there? Blessings. And even better than that, rest. Rest where everything is aligned, where everything comes into alignment and agreement. And you're aligned with yourself, you're aligned with your desti destiny and purpose, and you're aligned with God's divine will. That's rest. He was so happy and excited, and then he got so sad, and tears began to come to his eyes, and he realized, he saw the date on the letter, which was immediately after I'd asked him to clean the closet, he realized that he could have had those blessings five months earlier. So I have to ask myself today, and I'm asking you, are there things where we are, we know, if we really examined our lives and hearts, well, we know that we are in <laughs> obstinate opposition to the divine will of God. And if we are, all we have to do is just change the thinking where, between our ears. It's all happening right here. All in a moment's time, we can change what we're thinking and we can choose with our free will to align ourselves with God's divine will. And what's his will? Future and hope. Jeremiah tells us that. So we have nothing to lose. Uh, what we're losing are our blessings. What we're losing is the joy that you get from obedience. The joy that you get from obedience. <laughs> When you've completely messed up, then to have obeyed, to have done the right thing is way better than making very poor decisions and then having to attempt to clean that mess up. Mm -mm. No, it's just better. It's just better to get in step with God and, and be excited about his divine will and the purpose and destiny and future that he has for us. So I'm excited today. I'm going to give myself a self-exam. I'm going to check, check it out and see, hmm, Joy, is there something where you're being in obstinate opposition to the divine will? Because if I will choose to give it up, if I will say, God, forgive me, I'm messing up in this area. I'm not coming in line with your purpose or whatever it might be that I need to do, then if I'll just get busy doing it, Something better than Legos is waiting for me. I can tell you that. And I can promise you that too. God's best to you today and every day. And hey, let's live it. There's joy in this world.